At the American College of Cardiology's annual scientific session, Dr. Elliot Antman commented on the implications of the efficacy and safety of Vorapaxar for secondary prevention of cardiovascular events. So the, the TIMI-50 study, the TRA2P TIMI-50 study, uh, evaluated a new agent called Vorapaxar, uh, which is a thrombin receptor uh, antagonist. It's a new platelet, uh, antiplatelet agent, and it uh, is the latest in the array of agents that we have seen uh, tested for preventing uh, atherothrombotic events, ischemic events. The, the major findings uh, were that there was a reduction in the primary endpoint, cardiovascular death, MI, and stroke, but there was an increased risk of bleeding. And we've seen this before. And in particular, this, uh, this study underscored uh, an observation that's been made in other trials, which is that we see a marked reduction uh, in recurrent myocardial infarction, new or recurrent myocardial infarction, but at the risk of an increased intracranial hemorrhage signal, and that was particularly evident in patients who had a prior stroke. So speaking generally about the concept of using powerful new antiplatelet agents to prevent ischemic events, we see time and time again that we have benefit in preventing myocardial infarction, coronary ischemic events, but there's great concern about the provocation of an intracranial bleed. So the bottom line of uh, the uh, TRA2P study was that individuals who've had a prior stroke are not good candidates to receive Vorapaxar. That's true of other drugs as well. It's certainly an observation that uh, we saw with Prasagrel. Uh, I believe the same kind of uh, concerns exist with other powerful antiplatelet agents. And the, the message that uh, I see from all this research is that in our exuberance to prevent myocardial ischemic events, we have to bear in mind that our patients who've had a prior stroke uh, may not be good candidates at all for these powerful new antiplatelet agents. The study included um, several pre-specified elements uh, of both analysis and of um, subgroup uh, assessment that seemed to identify a, a group of patients for whom the benefit was especially good and the risk was uh, lower than for the overall population. Um, so how would you characterize what was found for those um, pre-specified subgroups and do you, how compelling do you find the data currently for, for those groups? Uh, the analyses that were presented suggested that individuals uh, who had not had a prior stroke were less than 75 years of age and were uh, over 60 kilograms of body weight had a benefit a significant benefit with Vorapaxar, and the bleeding risk for them was markedly less than for individuals who did not have those characteristics. So if we were to try and identify the optimum cohort of patients for whom the benefit is far in excess of the risk, or there's a more favorable balance of benefit to risk, it looks like individuals who've not had a prior stroke, who are less than 75 and more than 60 kilograms is the target cohort uh, for this kind uh, of an agent. And, and finally, um, you know, so you know, there is this issue of has the drug been shown safe enough for even a, a fraction of um, the um, secondary prevention population, but um, if enough evidence can be accumulated to show safe, reasonable safety in a certain uh, set of uh, patients, what, how do you see the, the benefits that's been seen so far? Is it uh, enough to warrant adding this to the treatment of at least some patients? So uh, assuming that we can identify with uh, a high level uh, of assurance the optimum cohort, what, what this study showed us is that another uh, mechanism of inhibition of uh, platelet activity and aggregation by blocking the thrombin receptor is beneficial. On top of the background therapy that certainly includes aspirin uh, and in a large uh, proportion of patients in the study as well, athionopyridine.